Hello and welcome to my uh, YouTube video on replacing uh, a broken firing pin in a vintage Remington Model 12 pump action 22 rifle. Uh, when I got it, I, it was all covered in rust, so I brought it home and pulled it apart. And as soon as I pulled it apart, um, when I took the breech block out, um, these two things fell out. A little, oops. A little spring and a little piece of metal so I knew something was awry from the start and not really knowing that much about the mechanics of it I didn't really know what was going on so um, so anyway I did some investigation so we'll go to that we'll come to that next bit in a minute first thing I'm going to do is show you how to take it apart okay so um, the first thing we've got to do is just pull the rifle apart, take out the takedown screw and just wiggle them apart so um, this is the part you're interested in now so what you do is put the rifle on its back go up and see this little little button here push that down so it goes underneath the front of the receiver and your wood comes hard up against the receiver there and put your finger this is the breech block at the back here, the silvery bit. Put your finger on that and then ease your um, fore and forward. And that leaves the breech block behind and it's little indentation and thing. And then that will come out. Now, so this, this has got no firing pin in it, but uh, going back to when I first um, when I first looked at it um, as I said those little bits fell out and um, and this is what the firing pin looked like and when I got this little piece of broken broken metal I could sort of see that it seemed to come from in there and it fits perfectly in there um, so the outside of the firing pin had broken off and then it became obvious that the actual spring there's no pins in here mind you because I've already knocked the pins out but the spring sits inside there and sits against that pin and holds the firing pin back like that so I, uh, I bought a new firing pin so I got this firing pin from Brownells um, so there's the packet, that's what it looks like. It looks like it's made by someone called Resource Manufacturing LLC. Um, so it's interesting that um, you know a company that has you know set itself up to um, to manufacture something like this. It just goes to show there must be enough of these rifles out there with enough broken firing pins to. Um, to make it worthwhile. All right, so here we have the original broken firing pin with a piece missing out of it, and here we have the new firing pin. Now, um, it looks quite well made, but the, it, it does say that it requires fitting, and it certainly does require fitting. Now, if we get the block here, the original firing pin in it, and see it goes in like that. And you can see where the two pins come through and retain it. Stop forward movement any further than about there, and the spring holds it back about there when it's in resting. So um, now the uh, this one won't go in at all. That slot there, well, it's, it's much fatter than the original one. I see this machine now. You can see the machine improves. So. Um, it obviously just needs finishing. Probably need a half a mil or something taken out of it. To see distant difference. So you can see it's not huge, but yeah, there's probably a quarter of a mil or something. So what I'll do is I'll actually I'll measure this broken one accurately, um, and then I'll. Um, I'll attempt to um, to file this one smooth on that side so it's exactly the same thickness as this one. Now the other thing I note is 
you look at the original pen, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that with the focusing of the camera. There's the firing pin, you can see it's actually beveled on one side there. Because um, it actually sits in there, you've got to remember the cartridge is coming up from the carrier this way. And I think that's why, just so that if, the, if it's poking out a little bit, the cartridge is going to not get caught on the pin. Uh, and then this little bit here is the ejector. Uh, and that's the same thing. I think if you can see that, you can see the ejectors beveled slightly on that side. So what I need to do, obviously, is uh, in the end, of, yeah, in the end of the pin on the new one is actually just completely square. So put them together. So what I just need to do as well as making this thinner. You can see it's easy, more easily there how much fatter it is. I'm going to need to dress the ends of this and try to get it as close to the shape of that one as I can. So uh, I'll take that home and do that. Um, so I took the new one home. The new one didn't fit in the um, in the slot. I took it home last night and I measured the the old one was about 1.7 millimeters across this thin part. Um, so I filed this off to about two millimeters. Uh, and then um, and then I polished it with some uh, emery paper over over a file and um, so it actually fits quite well here and the other thing I did was I the old firing pin had some slight shaping of the tip so I tried to I tried to copy that as much as possible now there's actually two pins that go through. I've already knocked them out. Um, you knock them out from underneath through to coming out the top. Now one pin sits in this, see there's a slot in the bowl and what that does is that just limits the distance the, um, the firing pin can go back and forth. Uh, this back pin, what that does is that actually sits in the front of this slot um, and then it has a spring behind it and so that actually pushes the firing pin back and keeps it back so that the front's not sticking out. Uh, now I'm about to put the new firing pin in but um, I can see a problem with that. Um, if I just put the spring in it's going to be sitting at the front of the slot and when I put this pin in it's going to tend to catch on the front of the spring. So what I've done is I've come up with an ingenious plan. Well, I think it's ingenious anyway. Um, so if we put the pin, uh, the spring in there, I've just got a bit of fine thread. I'm going to put it through just at the front of the spring, like that, and then spring in there now put the pin in the block and bring these so that they're back now if I hold that in place and I pull that and it didn't work that time it came out of the pin but um, I can actually get it I've done it I have tried it get it so it actually can feel the spring it's pushing pulling the spring back so what I'm intending to do is just pull the spring back um, enough so that I can't see the pin through the hole and then I'll put the pin in and give it a tap and hopefully it will then be in place. Alright so um, that method with the string worked a treat. I just pulled the string back so they could feel tension on it and then put the they're, they're fairly, fairly loose the pins actually you don't have to really drive them it's only really the last bit that drives them in. Um, so I put that one in to um, create the spring tension and then I put the other one in which limits how far forward and back the, uh, the pin can go and as you can see it's now spring tension it's complete um, so I think that that should uh, actually load load alright so what we'll do now is we'll put it back 
All right, so I showed you the trick of how to um, take the brick block out. Uh, this is basically the reverse, but again, if you don't do it exactly as I say, you'll have problems. So pay attention. Glass. All right, so now you see, I, as I slipped the breech block forward into the receiver, see it fell into that slot there? Now what we do is bring the slide back, push your little button here with your finger again and pull the slide back so it goes underneath the receiver. So there we go. Now support the receiver, get your finger, put it on the back of there, Push. There we go. It's now in place. So, what we'll do now is we'll put the rifle together. Now, you'll see there's a little bit of a gap here. If you push against that, you can feel it's kind of you're pushing against the mainspring, I think. Um, so, you just need to push it so that gap's closed all the way and then you should then be able to wiggle your your uh... right so there we go so let's see how it's like so I know I know there's uncocked now so I don't need to push this button um, there we go it's cocked so um, now it just remains to be seen to take it out, put some ammo in it, take it out, and see if it shoots. Alright, so uh, we've got some target shorts, take 30 feet per second. I had a misfire there, but uh, I've had the odd misfire. Must be uh, needs to be mainstream. Anyway, we'll try some. Uh, these are longs, Z longs, 29 grain. Right, now we'll try some long rifles. There we go.